Today I want to talk about mesh constraints. It's a very sexy way of animating motion, complex motion of course, because mesh deals with complex uh, instances. So uh, let's go to polygon modeling and create a sphere. And in order to keep the geometry nice and simple, we click on poly sphere one and reduce the subdivisions of that sphere. Here it is. It looks quite complicated. Reduce them to say five by five. It still sort of looks like a sphere from the distance, but um, it's um, it's much simpler in geometry now. Now let's go to the mesh network, which you also find under FX. Here is the mesh um, menu set. So you have this selected and click here and then it creates uh, 10 instances of the original and the original is hidden here and we actually uh, select it, press the key R in order to scale it down. You see um, we still have the influence here for scaling. Um, now um, here is the mesh node, the main node, where you have all the options. And the first option we want to use is the distribute, which all already comes with the uh, basic mesh distrib distribution network here. Currently set to linear, let's set it to spherical. So it's basically the, uh, the 10 objects are now arranged uh, in a sphere. It currently the num uh, number of points is 10. Uh, let's say 200 and then we can see the structure of the sphere and uh, here are the angles and the radius etc which I can uh, change accordingly. Uh, back to the mesh main node uh, we want to add some randomness. Currently they are all set in uh, one position here and now with the random node they are uh, positioned slightly differently like this uh, which is just basically fine. We can keep them a little bit closer to the original um, sphere but we can change the rotation here in all axes. Um, if we want we can change the scale as well. Uh, just um, keep in mind do it uh, uh, th with the same value for all three axes because otherwise uh, the object will squeeze along one axis and uh, this is not exactly what you want. Now um, Next thing, we click on Mesh again, uh, we'll add dynamics or maybe first some colors here and uh, let's go to a crater which gives us a nice color setting here. That's uh, just fine. Back to the Mesh. Now we have um, what kind of nodes? Uh, we can see all the nodes right here. We have the Distribute, the Random and the Color. That's what we currently have. Now we add dynamics. Add Dynamics node. Uh, there's a plane introduced at minus 20, that's the default, and uh, the uh, instances will fall down and collide with that yellow sort of sphere. Let's uh, increase the playback range to 1000 frames and now we do something uh, which we us usually don't do. We go to the bullet solver right here and in the bullet solver we have uh, the ground which we don't need and we have the gravity of minus 9.8 and we reduce this to zero. So what the dots now do is they don't fall to the ground they just try to keep a distance from each other they feel each other and um, so they slowly move outside away from each other. It's already a very nice Brownian sort of motion which you can of course change with damping, friction etc. Let's go back to the beginning and in the Mesh Dynamics node here you have this is all the way up here, all the way down. Initially sleeping, we covered that in one of the last tutorials. And here you have the constraints section. It's currently empty. It says it accepts a mesh constraint. 
mash m a s h so that's an internal constraint that's a special uh, con constraint special to mash the mash network right mouse click create now what has changed is we see the yellow lines between the objects and uh, this is already quite interesting uh, let's run the simulation and you see it's totally different because they stick to each other through that network of yellow lines. Where are the yellow lines? Well, you need to double click the mesh constraint and here you find the glue. If we disable the glue and run the simulation we have the same effect as before, that Brownian sort of motion. When we enable the glue, that's what we have. So they're glued very strongly to each other and since they don't have a gravitation they just fall into a rotational process. Now um, let's change the glue behavior. The glue, um, first of all, it's breakable, it can be breakable. Currently it does not break. Um, let's uh, activate breakable. totally different. You see the glue network in the center is still glued, gluing the instances to each other, but um, the further they get out and away from each other, the more single objects you have. This of course can be regulated. The breaking threshold is currently set default uh, wise to 2. So uh, we can re reduce this or extend it, say, to 10. It will result in a totally different behavior. So they break only when they have a distance of 10. No breaking inside. We can change this value to 5 and see if they have a distance of 5 where some of them float away. You see, some do. How many are connected anyway? Let's deactivate the breakable and uh, check out the next section here. Continuous creation means the network is being continually uh, created um, even if uh, particles, instances fall apart from each other, when they get closer to each other they might reconnect. That's meant by continuous creation. We can leave that on. And uh, currently it's set to connection mode the nearest point. And uh, we have a maximum of constraints which is five. So when you look, have a closer look here, uh, it's typically connections between five objects. Uh, we can reduce this to, say, two objects, you see, so you have much less connections and uh, the connections are within a search distance. Currently the search distance is five. If we increase the search distance like this, the distribution is different. So let's run the simulation now with a maximum constraints two. So only two neighbors need to be connected and the neighbors uh, are within a search distance of 10, which is quite uh, far away from each other. Here you see lots of triangles now. and The triangles basically mean they have maximum two contacts. So let's go to the uh, another section which is called motor. It's right down here. But for that purpose I want to create a new scene. Let's create a new scene now. And um, in polygon modeling let's create a cube and stretch it into that direction. Now from that cube we create a mesh network as we've done before. And we have 10 of them now. Uh, let's give it a color. And, well, this time maybe a mountain color, which is not really interesting. 
bit brighter like this. Um, the um, mesh node is here and we add dynamics and uh, we have that ground floor they fall down on the ground and they stay there so let's extend the playback range to 600 frames nothing really special will happen uh, other other than the, the objects falling down now um, in the dynamic section you can add a constraint just as we did before right mouse click create so we have a constraint now which doesn't do anything really it's that connection here the the yellow lines which we've seen before let's double click on the constraint and we have a glue here let's change it to custom let's change the connection mode to offset point connect to offset point I don't know why that is um, but that's uh, that's the way to go really and now you have um, uh, limits here open the section limits and in the limit section you see that the positional uh, the position is fixed let's set it to free the rotational limits are free anyway so that's the first thing we're going to do what happens basically nothing else all I see is uh, the the connection uh, things here which uh, don't uh, play a role here really now we want to go to the uh, rotational motor and that's why I stretch them a little bit longer because the motor is starting to work now let's open that section and enable the motor any changes no but how about the target speed 100 it was set to zero now it's 100 and now you see the motor working the motor is rotating in that axis in the x-axis let's uh, go to zero here uh, and go forward in the animation when they settle down here frame 80 sort of that is in my case now let's keyframe the target speed in X one frame further will increase that value to 100 and set another keyframe so it's jumping from 0 to 1 very drastically what happens now and if you want the objects to have more friction you need to go to the bullet solver you can actually deactivate the constraints so you don't see the yellow lines anymore and uh, here you have the friction let's see how this affects the situation now back to the dynamics section here and here we have friction as well let's increase that friction value here and now you see they're moving ahead they're slightly sliding back but basically they perform a motion in that direction Of course you can introduce a random node now so you see the dynamics section in the mesh network has many many more capabilities than just letting things drop on the floor